Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Celia is in demand at the moment and she'd like to introduce you to Eunice Ahovwo, who prefers to be known as Don Mark. Hello beautiful, hope you're having a wonderful day. How are you doing today? Morning beautiful, what are your plans for today? Celia told him she was at work and then managed to miss him for the rest of the day. Happy Valentine's Day, he said the next day. Hope you're enjoying your day so far. Sorry I missed you yesterday, she said. I'm at work now and we're quite busy, so I probably won't get a chance to catch up until this evening. All right, he said. What is your occupation? Hi, she said a bit later. I just stopped for a tea break. I'm an administrator. I work in the admissions office of the university in Durham. We're in the northeast of England. What do you do? Nice, he said. I'm an independent contractor. Nice to meet you. Can we be friends and maybe chat more? Independent contractor doing what? asked Celia. Do you have any means of communication like hangouts? he asked, where we can chat and exchange pictures? And so, of course, they moved to hangouts. You haven't told me what you do, said Celia over on hangouts. I'm an independent contractor, he said. I'm a seafarer in engineering department. What does that mean? asked Celia. You're floating around at sea in an engineering department. I mean, I'm working on a ship now, he said. Are you married or single? OK, said Celia. Doing what on the ship? I'm a widow. I'm in the 1200 miles in the Mediterranean, shipping crude oil to Monaco, he said. OK, I'm divorced, no kids. What does that mean? asked Celia. I mean, I'm shipping crude oil to Monaco. Do you have kids? Are we having a conversation, said Celia, or are you working your way down a list of questions that aren't related to what we're talking about? Yes, he said, we're having a conversation, OK? I have an adult son, said Celia. He lives in Sydney in Australia with his girlfriend. What were you trying to tell me about 1,200 miles? I said, he replied, I'm the 1,200 miles, shipping crude oil to Monaco, OK? I know, said Celia, and I told you I didn't understand that. Do you want to try typing it in English? What is the 1200 miles? It's where I'm working right now, he said. OK, said Celia. What is the 1200 miles? I've never heard of it. Is it the name of your company? Oh no, he said. It's a place I'm working in right now. Hope you can understand now. A common phrase that the scammers use when they've said something completely meaningless and have no idea what they've said. But I've never heard of a place called the 1200 miles, said Celia. Where is it? Is it the name of your ship? Is it the name of the hotel you're staying in? Is it the name of a bar that you're drinking in? What or where is the 1200 miles? There are different miles in Mediterranean, he said. But I work in the 1200 miles in the Mediterranean. You've got to love these geographically challenged scammers. I know I say that a lot. But where is the 1200 miles? asked an exasperated Celia. Show me on a map. Here's a map of the Mediterranean. Show me where the 1200 miles is. Unable to answer that, for the fairly obvious reason that our man had just made it up, I would imagine. He replied, it's near Monaco, but it's not there. I didn't ask you where it isn't, said Celia. Mark it on the map and show me where it is. It's not there. OK, he said. This is going well, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? He continued, it's not everything that can be on the map, OK? Oh, FGS, said Celia, just put an X on the map roughly where it is. What do you mean? He asked. Exactly what I said, said Celia. Mark the rough location of the 1200 miles on that map by using an X. You know, X marks the spot. The miles, he said, is not in the map. OK? Yes, said Celia. I know it isn't on the map. I asked you to mark its rough location. You know, show me roughly where it is. If you can't manage it with an X, try drawing a square that shows roughly where it is. I'm sure even you can manage that. That's how we'll normal call it, OK, he said. Why is this so important? It's important, said Celia, because you told me that's where you are. So I'm interested to know where it is. If you can't tell me, I'll have to assume that you're lying to me. and You aren't on a ship at sea. Are you in prison? I'm not lying to you, he said. I'm in the Mediterranean Sea. 
I'm shipping crude oil to Monaco. So I'm close to Monaco, OK? I'm close to Monaco, OK? He said twice. OK, Cecilia, so what was all that bullshit about not knowing where the 1,200 miles is? That's how I normally call it. Don't be upset about that, OK? I'm sorry. So, do you care for a chat? And get to know each other more better? Ooh, let's think about that. Normally call what? Asked Celia. Stop talking in riddles. No, I don't care for a chat if this is the sort of rubbish you're going to type. If you can't or won't tell me where it is, continued Celia, I'll assume you're either in prison or you're just some idiotic nutcase. I'm leaning towards idiotic, brain-dead, moronic nutcase. I've never met anyone who doesn't know where they are when they're on a ship. You can use the sat-nav on your phone. That'll tell you exactly where you are. I already told you. I'm in Mediterranean ship. OK? Speedily followed by... I'm 1,200 miles, far from the Mediterranean Sea. OK? I don't know what you can't understand here. You told me you're in the Mediterranean, said Celia. Now you're telling me you're 1,200 miles from the Mediterranean. Make up your frickin' mind. If you're 1,200 miles away from the Med, where actually are you? In the Pacific? In the Atlantic? In the North Sea? In the Black Sea? In the Baltic Sea? To which our man replied, North Sea. Phew, said Celia. So you lied when you told me that you're in the Med. Good start. Are you sure you aren't in Australia? Sorry, he said. Just a wrong typing. OK, I was about to say I'm 1,200 miles away, not in. OFGS, said Celia. Why on earth did it take you so long to say that? Sorry, OK. Do you care for a chat and get to know each other more better now? If you're the sort of man that refuses to answer a simple question and thinks it's clever to give stupid answers, then no, I don't care for a chat. And I think I know you very well already, said Celia. Why'd you say that, he said. I was so confusing. That's why. OK. OFGS, said Celia again. Why do you think I said that? I won't do it again, he replied. I hope not, said Celia. OK, he said. Can you tell me more about yourself? To which Celia replied, No. How long will it take you to get to Monaco? And please don't make me ask you dozens of times. Ten hours, forty-one minutes, he replied. Can I see a picture of you? And he sent her a photograph of a man sitting in an armchair, adding, as the scammers often do, Hope you liked it, beautiful. Ten hours, forty-one minutes, to get from the North Sea to Monaco, said Celia. That's a seriously fast ship you're on. And fair warning, ladies and gentlemen, if you're eating or drinking, please swallow now. Do you have to have special clearance from air traffic control? asked Celia. To which our man replied, yes, I do. Thirteen hours later, Celia asked, are you in Monaco now? Not yet, he said. Hope you enjoyed your lunch. Oh, said Celia, why aren't you in Monaco? Did you get delayed? Yeah, he said. What happened, asked Celia. Didn't your ship get clearance from air traffic control? I'm almost there, OK, he said. Hope you're having a wonderful day. What's your favourite food? What went wrong, asked Celia. Stop changing the subject. Why on earth do you want to know what my favourite food is? I thought we were having a proper conversation. What size shoes do you wear? Yeah, he said. We're having a proper conversation. So tell me what went wrong, said Celia. You should have arrived several hours ago. I'm there now, he said. Just got to Monaco now. In the last minute, said Celia, is your ship supersonic? Guess it must be if it needs clearance from air traffic control. Yeah, I'm in Monaco now, he said. How is work treating you so far? The same as it has for the last 20 years, said Celia. Is your ship supersonic? Nope, not really, he said. How did it get from not being in Monaco to being in Monaco in one minute, asked Celia. And how did the captain slow down in time to not slam you into the dock and wreck the ship? I was not in Monaco the moment you ask, and then I was almost there, he said. Celia asked him again. How did you get from not being to Monaco to being in Monaco in one minute? And how did the captain slow down in time not to slam you into the dock and wreck the ship? I was not in Monaco the moment you asked me, he said. I was almost here. But now, 
I'm there now. So Celia asked him again. I don't like that lie, said Celia, meaning to say I don't like men that lie, because they think they're sounding impressive. What lie? he asked. Whoops, said Celia. I don't like men that lie because they think they're sounding impressive. What lie? Are you effing kidding me? Telling me you weren't in Monaco and then one minute later telling me you were? Which one is true and which one is the lie? You told me it was going to take you 10 hours and 40 minutes to get from the North Sea to Monaco, so you should have been there three hours ago, unless you didn't get clearance from air traffic control. Whatever, he said. I can't decide whether you're lying to me or just too stupid to know where you are, said Celia. Stop it. OK, he said. I know where I am. I tried to explain to you, but you're just kidding me, I think. So which is it? asked Celia. You're lying to me about being in Monaco. You're too stupid to know where you are. Or you lied to me about not being in Monaco. Let's change this subject. OK, he said. I think you lied about not being in Monaco, didn't you? She said. I don't like men that tell lies. I don't lie to you, he said. OK, I'm not a liar. It's just that you're too difficult to understand someone. OK, she said. If you didn't lie about not being in Monaco, then you lied about being in Monaco. Why are you more interested in where I am? He asked. So tell me which one is true, said Celia, and which one is the lie. Then apologise to me for lying. I don't give a damn where you are. I do care that you're clearly lying to me, and I don't like men that lie. OK, he said. If you think I'm lying, so apologies. No, mate. She doesn't think you're lying. She knows you're lying. So, try again. Or, Celia put it, try again. Try. I'm sorry I lied. I really am in Monaco. I'm not a liar. OK, he said. You're too difficult to understand someone. Or, continued Celia, I'm sorry I lied. I really haven't got to Monaco yet. If you aren't a liar... Why did you tell me two different stories? They can't both be true. So you have a count of ten to apologise properly like a man and to tell me where you really are. Ten? Nine? OK, he said. I'm sorry I lied. I really haven't got to Monaco yet. OK, said Celia. At last. When will you arrive? she asked. A few hours, he said. Do you know why you got delayed? I don't know, he said. Why are you asking? Because, she said, I'm trying ever so hard to have a conversation with you, but all you want to do is change the subject and ask silly questions. What size shirts do you wear? She thought she'd try interjecting a silly question so that he could see what it felt like. A man, of course, had no idea, so he answered the question. 38 to 40. What are your hobbies? Yogic chair dance jumping, she said, and existential polymorphism. What are your hobbies? Nice, he said. As for me, I like playing golf and watching TV. Are you a good cook? No, said Celia. I burn everything. LOL, he said. What is your favourite sports? Are you working your way down a list of questions? asked Celia. Not really, he said. Just wanted to get to know you better. OK, thanks for understanding me. How long will you stay in Monaco? asked Celia. few days, he said. How tall are you, if you don't mind me asking? Why on earth do you want to know that, said Celia. Never mind, I'm six foot tall, he said. Why do you think I even want to know that? Tell me about Monaco, she said. It always sounds like an interesting place. Have you been there before? No, I haven't, he said. Will you get a chance to look round, she asked. Hmm, he said. I'm very busy, but I will try, OK? I hope you do, said Celia. I think I'd find it very frustrating to go somewhere and not get a chance to do a little bit of sightseeing. Do you know where you'll be going next? I don't know yet, he said. And then, having randomly asked her how tall she was, he thought he'd go into full-on scammer mode. Have you eaten dinner yet? he asked. Why? said Celia. Is this something you want? I'm just about to start. OK, nice, he said. Have you forgiven all the past relationships and those that have offended you or hurt you in the past? What on earth are you talking about, said Celia? Are you confusing me with someone else? Not at all, he said. As for me, I have forgiven those who offend me in my past relationship. How long have you been single? And do you like being single? My husband died three years ago, said Celia. And yes, 
I'm very happy being single. So sorry about that, he said. OK, I'm single now for the past two years. And I hate it, because I feel lonely. So tell me, what's your religion? My mum had baptised me in Pentecostal church, but she was good Christian, and my father just believed in God. Why do you want to know? asked Celia. Just wanted to know more, better about you, OK? Are you a Christian? I'm an 11th day D Adventist, said Celia. Oh, sorry about that, he said. I am indeed Christian. I attend Anglican Church. Not Pentecostal, asked Celia. Yes, I am when I was little, but I'm attending Anglican Church. How is the situation over there? Regards as the economy standard of living. What on earth does that mean, asked Celia. What's the situation in Miami, regards as the economy standard of living? How do you mean, he said. I don't understand you. Why don't you ever answer my question according? Because you ask ridiculously stupid, meaningless questions, said Celia. Oh my God, said her hapless scammer. Answer it yourself, said Celia. Then I'll at least have some idea what you're talking about. So, tell me, what's the situation in Miami, regards as the economy standard of living? Then at least I'll know what you're trying to ask. OK, he said. Things are expensive over here because of the COVID-19. OK, said Celia. I've never even heard of the expression economy standard of living. At least now I know what you think it means. Yes, the price of goods has gone up over here too. Thanks for understanding, he said. What's the economy standard of living in Monaco? She asked. I haven't been there. This is my first time of being in Monaco. Things are also cost here. What brand of music do you like? What brand? asked Celia. I used to like Apple Records or Decca. Nice, he said, not having any idea what she'd said. As for me, I love listening to blues, 80s and 90s, R&B, jazz, gospel, jams and rock and roll. Are you a sports fan? And what are your favourite sports? I have a passion for sports and my favourite sport is, surprise, Football. And I also like sea fishing, kayaking, boating, sailing are my sports of choice. I'm not afraid to speak my mind, trust my gut and follow my heart, even if it gets me in trouble. LOL. At this point, Celia failed one of my current tests, which is pick the most obscure of the hobbies they list and ask them about it. They can never tell you. No, she said. I'm not a sports fan. OK, nice, he said. What inspires you in life? My son inspires me, she said. Durham Cathedral inspires me. What inspires you? God inspires me, he said. He was still in full-on scammer mode the following day. What are you planning to eat for lunch? Food, said Celia. Have they told you where you'll go when you leave Monaco? No, I haven't been told, he said. What is your favourite food? Fried worm casserole, said Celia. What's yours? Sounds yummy, he said. My favourite food is Mexican and pizza. Followed by, and all together, ladies and gentlemen, what is your favourite colour? Why, said Celia, are you working your way down the list of questions? No, I'm not, he said. Sorry for asking. OK. What motivates you? I have no idea, said Celia. What motivates you? Well, why do you want to know? Are you doing a survey? No, I'm not. I'm motivated by life itself. Because life is what you made it. I love all that life has to offer. That's nice, Cecilia. Yes, it is. And then every girl's dream man asked, who is your mentor? I don't have a mentor, said Celia. I've been in the same job for 20 years. OK, he said, my mentor is my late dad. Clearly, he has no idea what mentor means. I think he meant inspiration. He was a nice, caring and understanding dad who loves and takes good care of his family. He always speaks the truth and he is a self-disciplined man. My dad is ready to risk everything he has for his loved ones, but I do feel the pain because he never lived to enjoy me. He was really the best dad in the world. He always tells me that uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. So for you to be successful in life, you have to face some challenges. He sounds like a lovely man, said Celia. Yeah, he is, he said. So tell me, what are some of the places you have visited? I've been to Norway on a cruise with my late husband. I've been to Spain 
I've been to the Canary Islands. Where have you visited? I have been out of the States several times on different occasion, he said. Maybe on a work trip or vacation trip. My work has took me to places like Spain, Malaysia, England. While on vacation trip, I've been to Switzerland, Italy, Yugoslavia, Greece, Bermuda, Paris, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil and Dubai. I would love my next vacation trip to be with that special someone because I don't believe I'm destined to travel this road alone. I look forward to sharing my last journey in love, laughter and friendship. Loving a woman is no longer enough for me. The genuine friendship that develops, enjoying each other's company, the ability to communicate one's needs, desires, hopes and dreams for me will sustain the relationship. I may not be perfect, but I am perfect for someone. Looking for my lover and companion to live a fun, loving life and travel around the world with, I'm looking for a woman who is a good communicator. Where did you go in England? asked Celia. Realising he'd just been called out, our man said, that was years ago in UK. OK, said Celia. I don't think things have moved around the UK. Where did you go to? Just go around, he said. What does that mean? asked Celia. To which his reply was, what is your best moment? And Celia's reply was, my best moment will be when you answer a question first time. What does just go around mean? I went to London, he said. OK, said Celia. I've only been there a couple of times. It's a long way from Durham. My favourite moment will be my wedding day, he said. Oh, that's sad, said Celia. Hasn't anything good happened to you before? Yes, yeah, sweetheart, he said. What positive lessons have you learned from your past relationships that will help you succeed in future relationships? That sounds like one of our application form questions for our psychology department, said Celia. Where did you copy that from and why do you want to know? I don't copy it from anywhere, he said. OK, just wanted to know. OK. Well, clearly that's not true, said Celia, because I just googled it and it's on lots of sites. Remember, I work in the admissions department of the university. I can spot a copied and pasted reply a mile off. I just create it with my vocabulary, OK, he said. If you're going to continue lying, said Celia, instead of admitting it and apologising, then I don't want anything to do with you. Goodbye. I don't understand, he said. Stop all this, OK? Which bit don't you understand, said Celia, that I don't like liars, that you're too cowardly to apologise? OK, sorry, he said. OK, said Celia, but now I'm going to find it hard to believe anything else you say. Why? he asked. Why? said Celia. Are you kidding me? Because you lied, then tried to pretend that you hadn't? Sorry, he said. How will I know that you aren't lying again next time you tell me something? Trust is earned. You just spoilt that, didn't you? I'm sorry. OK, he said. I don't. Yes, you said, said Celia. But you have to prove to me that I can trust you. What do you want as a proof? he asked. To which Celia replied, send me a video of you saying, I'm sorry, I lied. I hope you can learn to trust me. You still won't trust me if I did, he said. You won't know unless you try, replied Celia. I will try later, OK, he said, followed by, how do you normally spend your leisure time? OK, said Celia, cooking, cleaning, washing, ironing, talking to friends. How do you normally spend yours? Listening to music, cuddling up, said the man who claims to be single. You missed that, Celia. Reading a magazine or watching TV, cooking. What kind of music do you like, she asked. I like a lot of music, he said. I love listening to blues, 80s and 90s, R&B, jazz, gospel, jams and rock and roll. Give him his due. At least he came up with the same list twice. How many people have you met online, he asked. What do you mean, asked Celia. All my friends and family use the internet. OK, nice, he said. How many people are you talking to on this app? And I work in the admissions department, continued Celia. I meet dozens of people online every week. I see, he said. I have no idea how many people I'm talking to on Hangouts. I don't think it's any of your business, is it? OK, I don't mind, he said. And then, proving beyond a shadow of any doubt, 
that he really was a scammer. What are you doing at the moment? Standing on my head in the airing cupboard, said Celia. What are you doing at the moment? I'm off to work right now. OK, he said. Chat soon. OK? Anyway, said Celia, I'm tired of your list of questions. At least it isn't the same list you were using yesterday. You're clearly on the psychobabble list tonight. I'm not on any list, OK, he said. I use my vocabulary. Celia went to bed while our man came up with this as his apology video. Hello, sorry I lied. Hope you can learn to trust me now. Dr Watson and I have both watched that several times and neither of us can work out what the man in that video is actually saying. If anyone can lip read, please do let me know in the comments below. As you can probably imagine, Celia wasn't impressed. I guess you misunderstood, she said. I want a video of you saying that yourself, not you talking over a video of someone saying something completely different. Try again. How do you mean, he said. I did it for you. Good morning to you. I mean exactly what I said, said Celia. I don't want you talking over a video of someone else saying something completely different. I want you to face the camera and apologise yourself. I did nothing wrong, OK, he said. In that case, said Celia, make a video of yourself apologising to me. Don't use a video of someone else and dub it. OK, he said. How is your day treating you? Stop changing the subject, said Celia. I don't want to talk to you unless you send me a proper video of you apologising to me, not a dubbed video that you've stolen from somewhere else. I hope that's clear enough for you. OK, I will, he said. Hello, beautiful Celia, he tried the next day. How have you been doing? I thought we agreed that I'm not talking to you until you make a proper apology video, said Celia. Go away. Don't tell me you're serious about all this, he said. Very serious, said Celia. Not only did you lie, but you made a fake video. That's me on the video, he said, doing a different thing, because we're not allowed to make a video or a video call here on the ship. Even phone calls are not accepted. I record a video of men on an occasion. I can't make a real video here. Don't tell me ridiculously stupid lies, said Celia. This game of cat and mouse carried on for a couple of days until finally a man disappeared. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all the usual things that you do. Give it a like, share it with your friends, comment down below, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in another video.